Another small plug, another work of mine will be at the Mattress Factory in their Gestures exhibition coming in late spring summer, so look for that if you enjoy this. Uh, I'm here to talk about primarily this series, uh, the Eruv painting series, but there are two bodies of work in this room right now, the Eruv paintings, Eruvim, and the kosher tray paintings, which are the red, blue, and white paintings on the wall. They run parallel in my mind. They're, they're working against each other, they're working with each other, uh, but they come from a, a, a new interest I have in bringing Jewish ideas, Jewish laws to art making. Two different things that aren't usually brought together. And so you might notice that audiences may also be mixed because of this double interest, this interdisciplinary interest. And what I realized a couple of years ago was that some of the ways that Artists limit how they work, made famous by artists in the 1960s who set up a series of rules and then follow those rules to generate art. I saw some of the rules that I was living by, creating a Jewish home for my family, as limiting but also liberating. And so I wondered what would happen if I took those rules from this religion that I practice and apply it to my art materials. The second idea that happened sort of at the same time was that from studying art history, I knew that a lot of materials, paints, glues, um, things like that, come from things you can find in your kitchen. Like egg temper paint comes from eggs, maybe oil, and then the pigment. There's something called rabbit skin glue that also can be rendered basically from the fat of the animal and the, uh, the protein of the animal into a glue. I tell my students when they go, ew, that's horrible, that's gross, I say, well, ever eat fried chicken, your hands get sticky. <laughs> That's really the same thing. And so you can make glue out of animals. But rabbit is not kosher. So it's not in the Jewish kitchen. So I wondered historically what would have happened to the Jewish artist who wanted certain materials but couldn't get them because they weren't available or used in their own homes. A theoretical question that is impossible to answer, but it helped generate some of this work. So that's a brief beginning. But let's start over here. <laughs> uh, before I started making these Arab paintings, I was using electrical hardware in a lot of my work. And maybe some of you saw the work that was shown in this space in the previous biennial, where I was using electrical hardware as thinking of wires as lines running through space. Think of the wires running through the walls in this room as a three-dimensional drawing. That's how I imagined electricity and wires. When I came across the Eruv, which these pictures use an Eruv map as their generator, an Eruv is a boundary, theoretical, um, symbolic enclosure that Orthodox Jewish communities use, and I'll explain why in a second. But to construct one, you need a continuous barrier of some kind. You can use what's already in the environment, walls, garden walls, chain link fence, highways that you can't walk across. And then you connect these elements in the environment with something else, typically string or wire, to create an actual physical symbolic boundary. For those who don't live by this, stru this stricture, you can pass right under that wire and it's not even visible. To those who live by it, being able to see it is important to know where the limit is. What is this limit? Well, on Shabbat, or on the Sabbath, there are certain forms of work that are not permitted. Carrying or pushing a stroller is one of those forms of work. But you're allowed to do such things in one's home, inside a house. You can pick up a child to carry a child in a house. You can also do that within your own limited garden wall, if you had a walled garden. So this Eruv is a theoretical extension of the private space, the garden wall, into the community. Questions so far? <laughs> the second aspect of that is its purpose is to generate community, that people come together on Shabbat, that they share a meal within this boundary. By extending the home into a public space, I can now carry food to a friend's house and honor the, the, the extended family in this way. That's the purpose of this era. To me, it's another drawing of space. Just like 
the electricity running through this room. So it connects directly to what I was doing before. And it took me six months into the project to realize it was really the same thing for me. So what we see here are uh, nine paintings, and I used Arrow's maps to generate the shapes in these pictures. The lines that outline most of them, say in this one, are blue thread to allude to that string that's sometimes used to connect this boundary in the community. The upper right one is Squirrel Hill in Pittsburgh. That blue squiggly line is 376, and as it passes under the white shape, that's the Squirrel Hill Tunnel. And to the right, going sort of at a 11 o'clock degree angle, that blue line is Braddock Avenue. So that gives you some bearing on where that is. The entire map pushes past the tunnel and just into uh, Shedley Park. So it's a fairly large community. The rest of them correspond to other communities. The upper left is Manhattan. That includes not the whole island, that's a whole other Talmudic debate, <laughs> but Central Park, much of the Upper West Side. It's recently been expanded, which is not depicted in this map to include much of the Lower East Side also. What I've started to do recently, actually, and then one other favorite is Venice. Venice is a difficult terrain to navigate with such a boundary, because within these boundaries you're, you're only permitted to walk. You can't ride a bicycle, a car, or a boat. So Venice has to be designed to avoid the canals. Wherever one can walk to that limit is permitted on the Shabbat. What I've started doing is integrating these maps all together using digital tools like Google Earth and Google Maps. And so in this image, which is Philadelphia and the suburbs, and a section of Long Island, five towns and its neighboring towns, I found the relative position of each of these shapes and integrated them together. A few of them have some personal narrative. The one at the top in the middle is Park Slope. I lived accidentally in that area. I don't follow this tradition, but found myself living in, living in various different communities by accident. I included streets I remembered walking in that graphite line. So it's a mixture of the map plus my own personal experience. Behind us over there is an extension of this idea. And right in the middle, instant Eru in small packets of string. <laughs> and Eru is can be very much a do-it-yourself boundary. I've heard stories where people have gone camping and have made the boundary so that they could perform daily activities on Shabbat, carrying water from a stream to where their campsite is, because they, this is valuable to them. And so you don't need special strength. You don't need particular materials, but I made a sort of tongue-in-cheek version of a dime store a piece of string to allow the person to come in and buy a piece of string uh, at a discount price. <laughs> so it's, does, yes. does the boundary have to be physical, or it wouldn't? It has to be physical. There are very strict rules on how you create the boundary, uh, what, how to navigate doorways or wide. Um, sections that have nothing there. But part of it is to be able to see it as I approach it. If it's not there, it's not there. So they're designed now with strings so that the broader community is perhaps unaware of them or not bothered by them, uh, but they still have to be physical and present. There are rules, I'm not a Talmudic scholar, that certain lights of gap are permitted, certain things hanging over other things but not touching are permitted. So it's a very complex system of laws that's hundreds of pages, just like the conceptual artists gave themselves restrict restrictions, particularly so wit who had sent cards around telling people how to draw a line on the wall. So that's the similarity. You could go over the bridge in Venice. You could walk yes, over the bridge. you can go over so the you bridge. Could go over the canal that way. This is uh, the main bridge in the middle, so you can cross from one side of the Grand Canal to the other. 